Good morning, everybody. I hope you're uh, you're doing well. I hope you uh, you have had a good few days since uh, I was last with you. Uh, it's slightly wetter again. Um, I think this morning I've had glorious sunshine when I've been sat in here already. Uh, we've had a, a bit of a storm sort of outbreak, and uh, and now it's just a bit grey. But hopefully it's it's doing uh, all of your garden some good, and uh, yeah, it's just refreshing uh, our world a little bit. But it's good to see you. It's good to be with you again. Um, it's, a, it's a real privilege and a, a pleasure to be to be leading uh, our prayers this morning. But it's uh, it's very much all of us praying together. So please, as usual, um, contribute your prayers to um, to the comments and and who you would like to pray for. And I will be reading them out um, as as we get to that section of our prayers. So please do add in um, adding your prayers. And we will, uh, yeah, we will pray with together. So, um, yeah, welcome. It's it's lovely to be with you. I've got another riddle again. It's been a while since um, since I've had something up on on the board. Um, so, this one, um, it, it's an interesting one. Let's see whether you can any, anyone can suggest an answer for this. If nine plus five equals two, what does one minus two equal? So, it so it does connect with something that's happening later on today. So, um, yeah, have a go, see what, see what you think. If nine plus five equals two, what does one minus two equal? It's a bit of a brain teaser, it's almost too early in the morning for this, but uh, <laughs> I thought I'd, I'd start us off getting our brains working on a Friday morning. Uh, if you're just joining, welcome. It's uh, Friday the 5th of June. It's lovely to be with you. Uh, and we're, we're just starting off by a bit of a, with a bit of a, a brain teaser, um, just to get our uh, our minds in in gear this morning. And if you've got anything in particular that you'd like to be praying for today, please do add it to the comments, and we'll we will pray together um, for uh, for those things. So whether it's uh, individuals, whether it's people, whether it's situations, um, or, or just issues around the world that you would like us to pray for, let's do that today. Um, so I'll be starting in a moment. Um, nobody's offering any answers for uh, for what this might be. Um, if nine plus five equals two, what does one minus two equal? Any suggestions at all? I don't know whether anyone's going to have a go. I'll give you a, 20 more seconds and then uh, I'll give you the answer. Uh, but it is a real pleasure to be with you. A little bit of a grey day, but... Um, it's still really special to be together as a community praying. Um, so I don't think we're going to get any any suggestions. So I'm just going to have to give you the answer. Uh, so the answer, oh, do you know what? As as I said, that one answer has come in. And it's the man that's over my shoulder over in that house over there. Mark uh, has put 11. And that is the correct answer. Well done, Mark. Um, so, yep, yeah, if 9 plus 5 equals 2, what does 1 minus 2 equal? It is 11 because it is a clock. Uh, five hours after nine o'clock would be two o'clock, which means after uh, two hours before one o'clock would be 11 o'clock. Um, and the reason I've picked 11 is because 11 o'clock today is gonna to be the final cooking with Caleb. So I feel like we, should, we all need to put that in our diary for the day so that we can enjoy that for the final one of lockdown, this lockdown. Hopefully we won't have lockdown again, but um, yeah, we'll, we shall see. Uh, maybe we might get Caleb again for special editions, but this is the final one of, of lockdown. So um, join us for that uh, for De with uh, Reverend Debs and, and Caleb. Um, thank you, Mark, for that. I'm very impressed. Uh, let's uh, let's join together in prayer. So our our psalm today is Psalm 144, and we're reading it's it's verses 1 to 15, um, and our New Testament reading, our Gospel reading is from Luke's Gospel, and it's chapter 10 following on from what we've been reading, verses 1 to 16, and really thinking about mission today uh, and being sent out. So let's join together in prayer, um, starting again with a, a prayer from the Northumbria community. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to 
behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that we seek? We seek the Lord our God. And again, if you would like to join in with the response after the question, it will be Amen, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your joy? Amen, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all of your strength? Amen, Lord have mercy. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so the psalm for, to, for today is uh, Psalm 144. If you'd like to join along with me. Praise be to the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under me. Lord, what are human beings that you care for them, mere mortals that you think of them? They are like a breath, their days are like a fleeting shadow. Part your heavens, Lord, and come down, touch the mountains so that they smoke. Send forth lightning and scatter the enemy, shoot your arrows and rout them. Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are all full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. I will sing a new song to you, my God, on the ten-string lyre. I will make music to you to the one who gives victory to kings, who delivers his servant David. From the deadly sword, deliver me. Rescue me from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. Then our sons in their youth will be like well-nurtured plants, and our daughters will keep, will keep like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. Our sheep will increase by thousands by tens of thousands in our fields. Our oxen will draw heavy loads. There will be no breaching of walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets. Blessed is the people of whom this is true. Blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. And then the the Gospel reading, Luke's Gospel, says is le leading on from what we've been uh, reading this week. And it's, it's about mission. It's about Jesus sending out 72 or, or 70, depending on which version you read, uh, disciples. And mission is, is something that is massively important. And the, there was a, a quote made by uh, one of our uh, colleagues who works in the Hereford Diocese, Lizzie Hackney, who shared a, a talk at a conference that we led last week. And she said something beautiful, which I think is for all of us, that mission is something that each of us has a part to play in. And it's a God who finds a place for everyone that we serve and worship. So this is, is for all of us. We might not be sent out like the 72 to, to do, go to certain places, but we have the opportunity to be part of God's mission. And so Luke talked about these people that Jesus sends out in uh, chapter 10, uh, verses 1 to 16. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest. 
therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, Peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking, whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from the house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal those there who are ill and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles that were performed in, your, in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And for you, Capernaum, will you be lifted to the heavens? No, you will go down to Hades. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects him, not just, I'll say that bit again. Whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. And so let's, let's pray together. Maybe it's... Um, it's an aspect of mission that you've been called to, to do today for a friend. Maybe it's been given the right words that we're going to be praying for. Maybe it's a, a person in particular that you would like to pray for. So please do add their names in the comments. Let us pray to God, who alone makes us dwell in safety. For all those who are affected by coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety, we pray that they may find relief and recovery. We pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, we pray that they make wise decisions. We pray, Lord, you hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For doctors, for nurses, for medical researchers, we pray that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. We pray, Lord, that you hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the vulnerable and the fearful, the gravely ill and the dying. We pray that they may know your comfort and peace. We pray, Lord God, that you hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, Lord God, for all those who are being oppressed. We pray that you give them strength and the open people's ears and hearts to hear them. We pray, Lord, that you hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In particular, at this time, we pray for those who are named in our comments, we pray for Mary Grant, for Colin Daniels, for Emma, for Kate, and for Archie. We pray for Clive, and we pray for Liz. 
Gordon and Debs, for Laura, Jane, Jean, and all who are grieving. We pray for Sue, Pat, Mary, Sue, and Peter, and Jim. And for Emma and Andrew. Father, we pray for all those whose life is difficult at the moment, those who are struggling, those who are grieving, those who need support and guidance. We pray that you will give them strength at this time, that you will give them hope, that peace will be in their hearts, removing any anxiety. Lord Jesus, be with each and every one of them. You know their situations and you know how to help. So we commend ourselves and all who we pray for to the mercy and protection of God. We say, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, we say the prayer written by Barbara Glasson, the Methodist president of conference. We are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God giving and loving, wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And so, rejoicing in God's creation, let us pray with confidence, as Jesus taught us to, the Lord's Prayer in whatever form you feel most comfortable. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we finish with a blessing from the Common Prayer Book, Liturgy for Ordinary Radicals. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us all together this morning. It's, uh, as ever, is a real blessing and I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, don't forget Cooking with Caleb at 11 o'clock today. Um, I know, every, you know we're gonna miss that, but uh, make sure that you see the final edition um, and uh, yeah, have a wonderful day. It's, uh, it's raining a little bit, but hopefully you'll be able to get outside at some point and have a bit of fun and, and just share God's love. I pray that you'll be blessed. Bye-bye.